We are indeed live. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it on YouTube. Perfect set. Um, it's not playing on my phone, though. Not sure why. Yeah, you got it. I refreshed the screen and it was on. No, no, it's live. It's live. Yeah, I, I just X'd it out, though, because I don't want to, like, watch myself. <laughs> yeah um no i just i just have it playing on my phone like uh on the side just to be 100 percent sure because usually i have like a double screen setup and then you could play it on youtube and just make sure that everything's streaming but uh yeah. for this one i've just got it playing on my phone how's my audio can you hear me loud and clear is it echoey yeah easy yeah is it echoey or no 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 it's fine perfect set okay what is up guys uh kirill Cristales here uh today we've got with us daniel fazio fazio i hope i don't butcher it Fazio. Fazio. Are you is it Italian? Yeah, it is. Nice, nice. Um, aka the uh, cold email wizard. So as I also mentioned in the uh, email blast that I did before, cold email wizard or aka Daniel, whatever you want to call him, uh, he's one of the individuals that I looked up to and that I was watching and just learning from during my uh, my uprise. Um, and whilst I was essentially learning everything ranging from cold email, et cetera, he was one of the, uh, one of the only individuals who was essentially saying stuff that works, uh, especially when it comes <laughs> down specifically to cold email, because you had a lot of people just give a lot of shitty advice and, you know, it, it essentially leads to nowhere, but, yeah. uh, judging from your content, you evidently know what you're talking about. Um, right now, what's your, what's your focus exactly? Yeah, so I guess I can give context for everybody as to who I am, because the vast majority of people watching this probably don't know who I am. And my name is Daniel. I run this account called Cold Email Wizard on um, Twitter. The, the handle is at Black Hat Wizard with two Ds. Just hit 100,000 followers today, which is really cool. But I started it in May 2020, so it's been about two and a half years. And what I, what I, I was running a lead gen agency. I was sending cold emails for other people, but I was diving into like Russell Brunson stuff and like the concept of funnels and just online marketing, digital marketing, copywriting, bunch of, bunch of stuff like that. So I was like, all right, well, what's a good funnel? A good funnel might be, I make like an ebook about cold email and how to do it and then funnel people into becoming a client. So made an ebook, gradually added videos to it until it became a full course experience. So that's called cold email mastery. I sold $1.1 million of that. Um, and then what I did was on, as that was getting more sales and scaling up, when you're sending cold emails, you got to use a bunch of different software. So you got to get leads from here. You got to, you got to send them over here and it is, you can combine different lead scraping softwares. What I was doing inside of the course was telling people to just go use a bunch of other software and I was either getting affiliate links or just not getting paid to do it at all. So I said, that's kind of dumb. What I think I should do is just replicate exactly all of the software that I'm pointing people to right now. So that's what I did. Got one to scrape e -com brands, one to write personalized first lines, just released a new sending app last week. Um, I had a sending app before. It was just, it was just garbage. I had to completely scrap it, just rebuild an entirely new one. So that's what we did. Um, and then I had one SaaS that got a cease and desist from Meta, so now I'm permanently banned from Facebook. Bro, that, that's like a badge. That's like a badge of achievement. Uh, yeah. You know, you know, you know the first, uh, you know the first podcast attendee here that uh, got a cease and desist from Meta. Yeah, um, yeah. So that happens a lot, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, so I got some SaaS, and then yeah, I, I start to see this this transition of just like, I mean, courses, like people still like courses and stuff, but it's like, you, you look at, I'm really sitting here trying to make like a million dollars a month. I, I sit around like 200 to 250 right now with everything collectively, but I want to make a mil a month. And w the way I saw the market just changing is consulting packages or coaching programs. So that's why we made client essential. I know you put that in the list of questions. And that basically just teaches B2B businesses, marketing agencies, freelancers, and consultants how to get clients with cold email. And not just that, it's kind of like, I feel as if over time, I'm starting to insert myself more into what I'd categorize as like a big boy game. And what I mean by big boy game is you actually have a sales team, right? You have a sales team and you got like 
you got people doing specific things. We have 19 team members who manage client ascension. We got four closers. We got one setter and then we have a sales manager. So the sales team is six people, right? We have a six person sales team, right? So that's the kind of stuff we, we teach people as they, as they scale up further and further. Maybe they like have their own coaching program too, or something like that. But it's like building a sales team and managing that and how to make sure people get results and all that kind of stuff. But kind of just it's 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 all become just a sequence of events where it's like i'm just going to solve the issue that is directly in front of me so it's like okay it was agency it's like how do i get more clients for the agency it's like okay ebook and i was like how do i get more sales for the ebook okay turn it into a course how do i make more money from people buying the courses replicate the software how do i make more money from the tens of thousands of people who have purchased my stuff it's like oh high ticket coaching program it's one sequence after another so it's pretty, it's actually in reality, pretty simple when you take it one step at a time. How, uh, how old are you, by the way? I'm 25. 25. What did you do before you got into uh, online stuff? So I did, when I was young, I would, I would do, I would get like fake shoes and whatnot from China, sell them in school, sell them on eBay, just like get random products like that. I was the kind of dude who would go like knock on doors and like, Hey, I'll clean your gutters or I'll clean your driver or clean your pool. So I used to do that all the time. And then I went to college. Um, I went to, I went to Florida state. And what I did after college was I went to my parents and I was like, Hey, I graduated a year early. I want to try to make a business. And what I did immediately upon that, was I saw a YouTube video very, it, this was so funny the way this worked out. I saw a YouTube video, how to make $10,000 per month with Amazon FBA. Watched the video. Guy had like 40 something videos on his channel. I watched all of them in like a 36 hour period. And within like five days, I ordered a product. And this is, this is, this is a good thing for people to understand is speed. Like you see something and it's like, okay, I'm enticed by this. What, what instructions or information can I find regarding that precise thing I have interest in? Acquire the information and act upon it instantaneously. Like don't sit here and linger on it for a couple months or maybe one day I'll do that. Just like get the info and like move now, right? So watch all the YouTube videos, have a product. First product, it's like five days are ordered and you got to wait for the shipping. They got to make the product, they got to ship it. So it's like four weeks later, I get the product that comes in. Turns out this was just a winning product. Like, and it was Father's Day. It was like a stainless steel beer can holder. It just ripped, made like eight grand profit, like first product. And I was like, wow, sold out like immediately within like four days. I was like, wow, that was crazy. But the problem with that was I thought I was smart. So I went and bought a bunch of other products, lost a bunch of money. And I was like, damn, that stocks. But it made me realize in that particular business, it's capital intensive. You need money to buy inventory. And then the capital is tied up in the production of the inventory. It just takes a long time. So I was like, I need to be able to produce money without needing a ton of capital and being able to do it fast. And the way you do that is through a service business, in particular, a B2B service business. So this is when I bought Ty Lopez social media marketing course. What year? What, 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 what year was this? This is 2018. Fuck. All right. 2018. I buy Ty Lopez's course. I thought it was great. I learned how to do like Facebook ads and whatnot. Then started going to some businesses and I did Facebook ads. I did it for some restaurants. I did it for a med spa. I did it for a club. I did it for a club for a really long time. I was actually really good at that. Um, but then COVID happened and then that this this that got destroyed. So now at this point. I was like kind of while I was doing that, I made an Instagram growth agency. And the way I did it was with this software called Jarvi, where you could automate follow and unfollow. You can't do this now. So anybody watching this, don't They're dead. They, they don't, they don't accept new clients now even. Oh, really? Yeah. Don't they, you know they, about they, Jarvi? Of course, man. Uh, yeah. every, actually, most likely 100% of the audience watching this video knows about Jarvi and a lot more. Oh, that's so dope. Yeah. So I was using Darby to automate follow on follow for people's Instagram accounts. And the, the reason why I did that is because I saw these like two dudes 
I think they were living in like Arizona and they had like a ton of followers and they were running an agency and they're like flexing on Instagram. And I was like, I want to, I want to funnel hack these guys. So I just go to the website and like, you just, you just like, what, what are they doing? I'm trying to deduce it. They don't even put on their website that they do follow one follow. I'm like, I know you're doing follow on follow. Cause I followed them. This is when Instagram had the activity feed. You can see they're just following people all day. So I'm like, okay, you're doing follow on follow. So it's like I, I, I go learn some courses about Jarvi. I don't know if you ever saw this guy on YouTube. His name was Aaron Ward. And he had a Jarvi course and I bought it. I Aaron? Know. Aaron Ward? I think it was Aaron Ward. Sounds familiar, but uh, might, might be, the, might be the, uh, the first time I hear of him. But it does sound familiar. Yeah, yeah. So I, I bought his course. And it was really good. Showed how to use Jarvi and how to do follow on follow. So, I mean, you just, you just again, information – implement right do you need like back then when you used to do it did you need like 4g proxies and like yeah. uh yeah? yeah still back then as well you, yeah. you needed 4g yeah before? they get banned i thought that was like recent no yeah, like if, recent, you, if you like, bought expensive proxies you could put like 10 accounts on 10 one. accounts right yeah instead of you got some garbage proxies it's like one account per you know what I mean? mm -hmm. um but i needed free clients i needed to get the results like no one's gonna pay me unless i'm like you can exemplify that you already did it so i just sat there on Instagram and people, the email button on Instagram, I click the email button. I'm doing this manually at this point. I had no conception that Jarvi was even able to scrape email addresses at that point. So just manually doing that and writing cold emails, like one by one in Gmail, like to these people and being like, Hey, like basically I'll do this for free. Right. And I got some other people I knew in real life to do it for me. I got like two people from that. So I got five people. I did it for them for like two and a half months and like did really good. I got them each like, I don't know, like 5,000, 6,000 followers or something. So then I started just changing up the script of the cold email where it's like, hey, quick question. Uh, are you trying to get more Instagram followers? I, I, I work with at this person, at this person, at this person, at this one, at this one. And I got them on average this many followers per month. Would love to see if I could do something similar for you. Just sending hundreds of those. And I got about, I think it was like 70 something clients. I was making 12K a month at 21 years old with an Instagram agency. Like you didn't really even need to do anything. You just like put the targets and then set the amount and then you just go. And then you got to like change the targets once a month or something like that. So it was so easy. And then Instagram algorithm update destroys that business. I'm like, oh man. So what I did at this point was, all right, well, let me, let me, let me incept this. How did I just get all of these clients? It was by sending cold emails. Okay. So what's the most logical path forward from this point? It's sending cold emails for other people because it's a skill I acquired that produced tangible results that I can use directly as a case study. My case study was myself, right? So then I just started approaching other marketing agencies and telling them, Hey, I'll send cold emails for you. Right. So that's how that started. And then it was called email wizard and then SAS and then client essential. Right. Okay. So from the agency, you basically launched a uh, cold email wizard. Yep. Right. I guess the, I guess the, uh, the, the Instagram story explains why you chose the handle of black hats wizard. Yeah. 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 But it's funny. Cause I don't even really do black hat stuff. Like I, I pretty much always follow the rules. Cause I learned this lesson. I learned that. I know you have like a growth hacking thing and you guys like you might you might do some stuff that like is kind of shady i mean it's not i don't mean shady like scammy i mean like it's like against the rules right so i'll give you two examples of me going i mean the look the the just for like for whoever watching like uh, the maximum that we could ever do is essentially breach the terms and conditions of a platform like yeah, exactly. uh, if i have like people in my communities like hey uh how do i do like a a, a, a scammy financial offer i'm like get the fuck yeah, out yeah, yeah, like, yeah, what yeah, the fuck yeah, are you yeah. talking about so yeah so I think that the best context for me to say this is like, I in general prefer to follow the terms of service and I'll, I'll explain why, but I'm going to first. Give I you agree, by the way, before you even explain, I agree wholeheartedly, especially right now I, with some exceptions. Yeah. On some cases. Two, two occasions. So one was the Instagram agency. I was breaking the terms of service. The business got destroyed in an instant. The whole thing. Is that when you, is that when you got the season desist from Meta? No, 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 no. This season no. desist is like years later. This is a completely different thing. Um, and now the second one was I was doing like an eBay, Amazon arbitrage drop shipping thing. Cause I was using some software. I forgot what it was, but you, you could just find it, it would analyze products on Amazon and eBay and see if there was a price disparity between them. And you just mark it up it would automatically list it. When somebody bought it from you on eBay, it would automatically purchase it 
on Amazon and ship it to the customer and upload tracking and do all of that. So like, obviously this is against the terms of service for eBay, right? But I was making good money from that. It was, a, and I didn't do anything. That's the point. It was like one of those things where it's like, wow, this is like hilariously easy and things like that work for a little bit but I prefer not to do them. And the reason why is because if you're going to do anything, you might as well do it to make it absolutely massive. And that is exactly the function as to why I decided, okay, I'm going to do, I'm going to make cold email wizard, right? I'm going to make this following the terms of service of stuff. I never want to be in a position where something like my business can be destroyed in an instant ever again. Right? So it's like cold email wizard, client ascension, like, clean businesses that could make a million a month, right? If you're going to do anything, it might as well have the capacity to be able to become massive. Exactly. Yeah, no, for sure. Because otherwise you won't be able to scale it. I was even speaking with uh, Vikesh from Texas and he's like, Texas will never be like a billion dollar company. I'm like, well, yeah, but like, I'd love to hear why. He's like, well, because it just breaks the TNCs of like so many companies. Like if yeah. if, if it grows to any point, it's just going to have so many enemies, which makes perfect sense. Hilarious, um, though, LinkedIn, I think LinkedIn was in a lawsuit with somebody. And they I really had I, I had one of the guy from, uh, I had the owner of Meet Alfred on uh, on our on our channel doing, uh, now I don't, I think his tool is still Meet Alfred, but he got like, he had like litigation from LinkedIn against him. Yeah, but so, I think it was ruled that you can, in fact, scrape from LinkedIn. It's not illegal. It's legal to scrape, by yeah, the way. Legal, but it's, it's terms of service. But it's like, I mean, even even if you like, you you're making a bunch of dummy accounts and whatnot. It's like, what are they gonna do? Like, you know, like, it's, oh yeah, you find out who the CEO is and like ban the CEO. But it's like, well, okay, well, it's 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 through, it's through a bunch of random dummy accounts it's like you can't find them you know what i mean it's too many did you uh were you running a tool when you got the season the sys because it doesn't it doesn't make sense for them to send your season the sys if you're just an individual scraping the website from the patterns that i'm seeing it's tool providers and then let's say huge agencies with like hundreds of clients uh, no it wasn't it sys. wasn't a tool it was a database it was uh -huh. a database right i don't want to say too much but it was like it was a database of leads and i got a season oh, the all right yeah. fine yeah. Um, yeah. No, I, mean, man, I, like, I didn't care about that particular SaaS. It, didn't, it wasn't like a significant portion of my income, which is another reason why you should like diversify. And I don't mean diversify in terms of like branch out to other niches, like, like horizontally or like vertically integrate is what I'm saying. It's like if you're functionally, what a lot of you guys are probably selling is some mechanism to take somebody from point X to point Y and that journey is going to evolve, involve so many different things to do, right? And now what I'm saying is to own the things between that journey. And that's exactly how I've structured my business, where it's like, okay, somebody wants to scale up a company with outbound marketing. It's like, okay, well, one, I have a course. Two, I have a bunch of software that you'd otherwise use. And then three, I have a coaching program. You know what I mean? That you can like place SDRs inside. Those, those are the three things that you're running right now. Yeah. Course, uh, software, and then coaching. Yeah. I don't really push the course though. I really don't care about that. It's right. like my primary, my primary thing is client ascension because it's just, it's just structured in such a fashion to where it, that business alone could do a million a month. And I'm pretty confident I could take it there. Mm -hmm. so, so go ahead. So it's, it's, you, you're not going to take a course to a million a month. Like you're not. You know what I mean? You could take a SaaS I mean, to a million could. a month. Like you could. There's a couple of outliers out there. Uh, the courses that I've seen that go to a million a month without the like necessary backlash of like, you know, quote unquote, Sam Ovens is a scam. B2C. Like, yeah, B2C category wise, the course, the course that I've seen that scaled insanely is like a fucking, like simple shit, like an Excel course, for example. That's what I was thinking of the girl on TikTok, the XL exactly. girl. That type of stuff, like yeah. it, it scales. Like you can't really get like a bunch of backlash to it because, like, I don't mm -hmm. know. Like from from what I've seen, people don't necessarily hate on those. This but is yo. This is something I want to talk about real quick. About like a lot of people, like your audience in particular, might be like, oh, like someone, like I don't want to look like a scammer. Like I don't want to end up on Coffeezilla or some shit like that. Let me tell you how you end up on Coffeezilla. You sell a business opportunity course. And now let me explain the difference between a business opportunity course versus 
any kind of B2B offer. A business opportunity course is I'm going to teach you this precise business and show you exactly how to get clients for it, how much to charge. And I mean like the absolute intricacies of it, A to Z for a business model. Now you can sell, instead of that, a mechanism specifically to B2B where it's like, hello, Mr. Prospect who actively runs a business. I'm going to show you how to do this specific thing to achieve this specific result. You don't get called a scammer unless you're like blatantly actually scamming, but you don't end up on CoffeeZilla running a B2B service company, whether it's B2B coaching or consulting or B2B services. So it's like don't sell biz ops is what I'm trying to get at. I think, I think like personally speaking, I think, uh, cause like I run a course as well, like, uh, hands down, like the, I think you end up on CoffeeZilla for, imagine we end up on CoffeeZilla after this one. Uh, I think you end up on CoffeeZilla if you have like a fucking course that's priced at like 3,499 and then you're just offering like a bunch of theory, like cleanse your mind, meditate in the morning. It's like, bro, what the fuck? Like this information is available like readily on YouTube. Like even the, uh, even client ascension, as far as I remember, is like 49.99. Sure. You're increasing the price cause you're adding more stuff into it, but it's like, it's 50 bucks, bro. Like, what, what do you expect? Like, come on, even if it's shit, like you spent like 50 bucks, like relax. Um, Are you talking about somebody spent... mastery? How much? How much is it? The client session is a coaching program. That's high ticket. I think you're thinking right. about Cold Email Mastery, which used to be really low. Now it's like 500, something like right. that. But I have a money back guarantee on it. Where it's like, I, I, And essentially it's like, listen, do what I say. If it doesn't work, I give you your money back. And I don't like throw, throw a, a hissy You need to, that. like you need to. Like the refund policy of like anything uh, info product has to be like very flexible. Otherwise, like the amount of haters that you're going to get are like absolutely crazy. It's, this, this is something to note as well with a lot of you. I, I'm assuming most people watching this are running a business. Typically, you have to think of like somebody asking you for a refund as an investment on your end. And what I mean by that is if you don't give them a refund, they're going to throw a hissy fit. So by you giving them a refund, you are purchasing the avoidance of having to deal with public perception, like, like someone called like the possibility that somebody like you're purchasing insurance. That's literally what you're buying when you give somebody a refund. And it's like some, uh, sometimes they, they actually deserve a refund. Sometimes they don't. I understand. Sometimes they really actually don't deserve a refund and they're just dumb. But just, just give it anyway. The way that I like to think about it, even in the service-based business, uh, if you don't give a refund and then they go and drop a bad Google review on you, yeah. you are essentially risking additional 10 to 15 clients for one, one fee, basically. Yeah. So like the, uh, the, the opportunity cost is like way too high. So you know, anything like you always got to give refunds. So, um, talk to me about like your SaaS businesses. Like how'd you launch them? Do you develop them yourself? Are you a coder or do you hire? What's your whole strategy with regards to that? Cause like we had Nate Aston on the show and, uh, the guy's like very, very savvy with like automation and API APIs basically in general. I'm like, I have a pretty good understanding of those two. Um, but I've never spoken to, uh, any specific, uh, developer basically that, you know, like coded out his own tool, found product market fit, and then rolled it out, like coded it out for like three months. What's your strategy with regards to the, uh, the, the SaaS tools? How do you find product market fit? Which ones do you own right now? And how do you roll them out? Yeah. So, um, three of them were partnered with a guy I met on Twitter and I basically explained like to him, I was like, Hey, I have a ton of people buying this course. I want to replicate these ones. Exactly. So it was pretty easy for me to go to him and explain, like, just replicate this essentially like different UI and branding and whatnot, obviously, and like different backend function. Cause we obviously can't steal their code. So he did that. I'm not technical in any capacity. I can't code. So he did that. So one of them was 50, 50, the other two it's 70, 30, but he, he, he does other stuff. You know, he's entrepreneurial. He also has a full-time job, which I don't think he works that a lot, but still he has a family. You know what I mean? It's not his, like his full-time thing. Isn't like running these SaaS companies. So like those three in particular, they don't really make much money. One is a white label that I just get hella SEO on and it just like exists. And I work precisely zero hours on it a month. I just look at the stripe. Um, and then the other, the new mailing app that I have right now, it's called Melody. I own a small percentage of that, but I want to explain my reasoning for that and how that kind of elapsed. Melody 
is developed by people who were in client ascension. So there was a, there was a developer in there and he was like kind of thinking SAS ideas. And he was thinking of like some, some reporting function for people who send cold emails. It's like, listen, bro, you're going to go into this. You might as well just make the full sending tool. Now, anybody who's thinking about making a sending tool, you're going to spend roughly like $60,000 of, of dev work to even get it to even, like work. Is this, you've been working on this thing for like six months and finally out. But the, the reason why Client Ascension, Client Ascension bought a stake inside of it, they invested into it as an entity, right? So I own a little bit of Melody. But the function as to why I did that was so that we can take Melody – and give it to people in client ascension for free. So we are paying for the mailing software for people in client ascension. So it's like, hey, you come into client ascension, we're going to show you how to make cold emails and do cold emails. And by the way, we're going to give you the software for free. Because what would happen is a good cold email software, like don't use the cheap ones. They're cheap for a reason. They're garbage, right? A good cold email software, you would be spending, you get 10 domains, you're spending like $500 a month to send cold emails. So we're like, how about we just eliminate that? And now this is going to do two things. One, it makes the value proposition to join way better in the first place. And then two, you're probably going to renew your membership at the end of it and stay in client extension because it's a cost reduction. You get, you don't pay for mailing, right? So it, that, that was a very strategic move on our part. And I, I, I wouldn't even like, it's kind of like a, a, a SaaS enabled service company, I guess you could say, or some some, some mixing of that. Client yeah. Ascension is the Discord that you guys have. No, 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 no. Client. Which Ascension one is, is which one is the Discord that's like built on Discord? That's Internet Money. Oh shit! Yeah, so Internet Money is the one that's like forty nine ninety nine, right? Or like Internet money, Internet money is forty six dollars a month. Forty six, and then Client Ascension. How much do you charge for that? That is ten thousand eight hundred dollars for a year. A year, fuck man, that's like uh, that's like a consulting dot com. Yeah. So like around that price range. How many uh, how many active members do you have on Clan Ascension? One hundred and fifty seven. And like, what's the what's the 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 general thing there, or is it like totally tailored? It's it's so the way it works is. We only let B2B companies in and you have to be actively running a business because what will happen is if you let people in who don't run a business, like your value proposition is starting to become like, hey, we're going to show you how to make a business. And it's it's so hard to take somebody from like zero, like, hey, here's an idea to sell. And like, they've never run a business before. Like, oh, just send cold emails. You just don't have any context of like how to operate a business at all. Like they're just, it's just too hard to take somebody from zero to even just five, like 5K a month. Taking somebody from 5K a month to 25K a month is easier than taking somebody from zero to five. So it's like someone comes in and typically people who join Client Ascension, they're anywhere between five to 20. And they want to, we got some people who are higher than that, but they just want to send cold emails, right? They want a system. And what I mean by that is you scrape leads here. We give you the software to do so. We write the scripts for you. We tell you what to respond to those scripts. And then we, you record your calls and then we review the calls. And then now what happens is like, okay, you want to scale this up? You need to hire a sales guy? Okay, we'll go find you a sales guy. We'll help you find a sales guy. You want to manage a sales team now? Okay, we'll do that. You need a setter? Okay, we'll show you how to manage a setter. You know, all the, this this upward spiral of, of, of competence aggregation, I guess you could say. Or it's like, a, like big boy stuff, like I was saying before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what's your uh out of uh out of all the uh businesses that you have right now what's your biggest cash cow client ascension client ascension yeah. right um, and I I, I I i i happen to i wouldn't like your like the thing on here says makes 400k a year from SaaS. i wouldn't categorize myself as like a SaaS entrepreneur i'm just like a guy who happens to own some SaaS. And I've just like kind of intelligently found my way into owning some equity and making some cash flow from that but I think ultimately one day I'd like to I'd like to run a B2B SaaS company. And I, I'm saying B2B specifically because you can make 
it's so easy to scale something where you charge a lot of money. And the reason why is because every single sale is a significant portion of revenue. So it's really easy and you can spend a lot of money for acquisition and you can do outbound. What I mean by outbound is cold calling and cold emailing. So if you have a B to C SaaS, like something like Canva, obviously Canva is a massive company, but if you're trying to sit here and make a Canva, good luck without a couple million dollars, right? But if it's a B to B SaaS or just any B to B company at all, you can start with outbound, cold emailing and cold calling, which is effectively free. And then when you have money, you can start doing apps. I agree 100%. So um, let's switch it to Twitter content marketing because I know that you're releasing a lot of different gems with regards to that. Like what's your biggest secret with regards to it? What I see popping off right now personally is essentially like well copywritten threads at the end of the day and then getting retweets from big accounts. Mm -hmm. And that's basically it. You mentioned that paying for retweets doesn't work. I totally agree. I, I, I think I agree with that. I think it, it can it work depends. to a certain extent. It's it, it totally depends. You have to do it very like I think if they're in your niche, basically. Yeah, yeah, it has to be. But it has to be. I, 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 I have a whole YouTube video on how to do this on my channel, but I'll explain it here as well. You, Twitter is very interesting. It's like every other social media. In the beginning, you need to grind. Like you need to really grind and work hard for the first five thousand followers, and then it becomes really easy. And what I mean by that is threads yes but there's a there's a very very easy way to just get an initial like hard boost on twitter and what it is is it's called an auto dm from tweet hunter um jay money says just watching daniel two days ago good, good content thank you sir but you want a real hard mega boost on twitter like immediately out the gate what you want to do is you want to do a a tweet hunter tweet hunter.io auto DM giveaway. So what that means is you make a tweet and it says, I just made this thing. If you want me to send it to you, retweet this tweet and comment this. And then what tweet hunter will do is everybody who retweets and comments it, you automatically DM it to them. And if it's really, really good, you get like a thousand people to do it. And you put parentheses, you must be following me to get it. So now bam, thousand followers like out the gate. You can't do it with zero followers because no one's going to see the tweet, obviously. So you got to sit here and, and do a little, little little trickery to get your first couple hundred to get that amplification in the first place. And to do that, Twitter is a social network. So inherently, if you want to get big on Twitter, you got to be social. And I mean like actual networking. And I don't – like you got to go comment on people's stuff. And I mean, actually contribute to the conversation, like insert yourself into a conversation with something you can actually add. So I tell this to people and what they'll typically do is like go find somebody's tweet and like reword the content. Totally agree. Like it's like a discussion board at college or something. It's like actually enter the conversation, right? Like contribute something and explain something that's happened to you or something you learned or examples or like stories or something like that. Like you have to like actually put a concerted effort into doing that because Twitter is the only social media that is entirely text-based people on you are rewarded on Twitter for giving a lot of value and just like being smart. And a lot of people are watching this. Like they're, they're like in your growth hacking type stuff. All of you probably have a high IQ, like probably. So you are competent and able to write out a specific idea and explain to people how to get from here to here using this kind of intelligent thing you have created, like some system where it's like, here's how I did this and, and got to here. I mean, then you exp explain the process, right? Because people are only going to follow you for two reasons. It's either one, they're entertained by you or two, they feel like they can get something from you. And if you want to make people feel like they can get something for you, you got to tweet out game and like specifically in the beginning have a pinned tweet like a thread of just like how i was able to go from this to this or how i was able to do this step-by-step -step guide and it's like a screenshot of like stripe or something like that maybe you signed a big client how i got this big client doing this thing right now you're commenting on people's stuff you rack up a couple hundred followers over the next 
seven to ten days, and then you do all auto DM giveaway, thousand followers, and now just start start tweeting. And I mean, there's like there you, you got to understand copywriting a little bit to a degree. Um, every it, it's it, you write a thread. The most important thing is the first sentence of the thread. So you just go read some copywriting books and understand how to get people's attention. But it, like, in general, it's like just like, ex, like show people how to do things and shit post a little too. Like show you're an actual human. So what do you uh what do you what do you think about just like outright trolling on Twitter? Uh, counterproductive yeah, or no, never. Yeah, I think there's a difference between like trolling and shit posting. Trolling is like like your entire account is like. I don't know. You just, you, you're just annoying. Like, you know what I mean? It's like you, you haven't provided any value and like, you're trying to be funny, but like no one knows you here. You know, it's kind of like you're, you're like, you walk into like, like a classroom first day at school or something like that. And it's like, no one really knows you. And you try to, you try too hard to be funny. And now everyone hates you. You know what I mean? Where it's like, you gotta like, you gotta be a socially aware human and kind of like intelligently insert, insert yourself into an actively running conversation and like contribute something you know what i mean like show people you know things and like help them out also growth hack respond to every single dm and comment works so well how do you um do you, like most of your marketing right now is it mostly done through the personal brand you've built on twitter or do you still like run facebook ads do you still like uh run ppc etc or is it just mostly personal branding right now for like yeah, whatever so I'm, I'm, I'm totally banned from everything that meta owns so i can't do retargeting over there um, i swear like <laughs> fuck i'm i'm actually like before i'm hopping on this podcast i'm actually on a fucking call with a friend i'm like bro can i use your facebook account like my business manager is fucking banned uh for a pilot that we're running it the fucking platform number one is hypersensitive and then number two like ugh, you know meta like yeah. but uh yeah that's, yeah, most of it, a, a lot of it comes from Twitter, but I'm going off into YouTube now. Right. Yeah. What I found there, what I found on YouTube, like in the space specifically, like MySpace, is B2B lead generation and like marketing agencies and kind of like make money online a little bit, but not really. But what these people do. Is I I'll go watch people's videos and they're just spitting nonsense. It's just garbage. Like it, it, they're just not saying anything. Like and what they're saying is, is just incorrect. So I feel like I could, it's just so easy for me to go on YouTube and be like, Nah, you you probably have been told this. It's all wrong. You should listen to me because I make this much. Here's proof. All right, let's get into the video. Like just like that. You know what I mean? So I'm doing YouTube. A lot. And I'm going to do YouTube for a really long time. I'm pretty confident I could probably. What caused the, like, because you were, like, predominantly on Twitter, like, fully undoxed, etc. The only profile that you had is, like, called Emo Wizard. What caused you to, like, you know, go more into personal branding as opposed to just having a persona online? Because because I want to make a mill a month. Right. Okay. Because I can't just, do it again. I'm not going to make a mill a month just from Twitter. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, we do some outbound, cold email and cold calling, but it's like, all right, well. The reason why I picked YouTube is because it has infidence. And what I mean by infidence is the, is the following. So like I'll give you an example. I made a video called How to Earn Money Online, No BS Guide, parentheses, everything else is garbage, right? So what I was trying to do is rank for a very specific search term, which was how to earn money online, Right. So you look at, you search how to earn money online and you might see some videos with a couple million views that are like three. Yeah, VidIQ vid, vid gang represent. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I use VidIQ. Um, you might see a couple, a couple people with a million views over the course of three years. Now, I'm emphasizing over the course of three years, where that means like he didn't get a million views in a day. It took him three years to aggregate it and it still ranks at the top. So it's like what I'm doing with my YouTube videos is I'm making them with the intention to rank for a specific term and to establish permanence on there. I want infinite. I want to, because Twitter is, if you're not actively tweeting, you're not actively making money. Cold emailing and cold calling is not, if you're not actively cold emailing and actively cold calling, you're not making money. YouTube is... You rank for things, you make money forever. 
And it, it is also the highest form of social authority of any social media platform. You have like 100K on YouTube. It's like, wow. Link to his YouTube is, I don't know, it's probably in the description. It's Daniel is it, Fazio. Is it, no, he's tagged. He's tagged in the video. Just click on the tag in the title. It should take you to his. Uh, yeah, the at. Yeah. I agree 100% with regards to what you said about YouTube. And I even have I even have myself on video talking about how, like, my channel has never, like, really popped off tremendously. I'm sort of happy that it hasn't because, like, I'm very, very niche down, uh, extremely niche down. Like, uh, you won't find me, like, if you're interested in Facebook ads, but you will find me if you're interested in warming up your inbox, for example, because uh, you want to send, like, I don't know, a thousand emails within a certain time frame. Um, so... Uh, I agree with you wholeheartedly with regards to that because I have videos from November 2019 that are still bringing leads into my community to this day. And I like to compare it to essentially ads, right? Ads, the results pop up, the, the results uh, drop off as soon as you uh, essentially end the ad spend. So that's the, uh, that's the, the, what did you call it? Infinity? Fuck, Infinite. Man. Yeah. Infinite, right? Yeah. It's the only, it is the only social media platform with infinite. Nothing else will give you that at all. Although it's winner take all. It actually is. So you need to you need to grind real hard on YouTube to get up there. Like really very, very hard. Where it's like we're sitting here doing a live stream. We've been talking for 45 minutes. It's like we're grinding. You know what I mean? And it's like I'm pretty I filmed two YouTube videos today, like just before this, that are being edited. I'm dropping eight thousand dollars a month on the production of that. I'm dropping another three thousand a month at the production of the shorts, right? It's it's just it's so it's so much like capital and time and resources you have to pump into it for a very long time in the beginning just to establish that permanence. What's your audience retention like on the uh, on the videos that you're releasing right now? It's somewhere between because I have different kinds of videos. I have like I have like value videos, like instructional, like here's the thing I'm going to show you. And like, I'm going to dive in and teach you how to do that. And then there's vlog style videos where like, I have a, a, a guy who follows me around and then we'll what gets, what has, cause like, it's honestly, it's all about audience retention, everything yeah, else. Yeah, I know. No, it's, they'll sit fine. around, they'll sit around like 30% or something like um, that. And what's the average duration of a video? Is it like 15 minutes you'd say so, 10 minutes so some of them are eight like the vlog ones are like eight but then the the tutorial ones are like 20 something minutes and yeah. those have pretty high i think like my twitter guide one that has i think that's like 29 percent or something like that but what i imagine people do is they click the save to watch it later it probably just showed up they're like all right i'll finish this at some point like that video uh like because like i watch your shit that video, if I remember correctly, I think I watched it three weeks ago whilst hoovering. Well, what? Hoovering. <laughs> Just I, I had it playing in the background. And yes, oh, I was okay. in the place. Yeah. Broke life. Um, but yeah, that because it was like a pretty long one. And it's uh you can digest it like audio wise. You don't necessarily need to see what you're talking about. But that's how I watched that one, basically. Um, but uh, reverting back to what you're saying, I agree 100%. Like if you can basically solidify yourself with like the YouTube game, you're basically set no matter what. Like even if like a recession happens, for example, your your competitors are running out of ad spend, right? But then you're basically solidified on YouTube. You're getting those organic views. Nothing can break you. And additionally, additionally right. shout out to shout out to one, Brian Moncada and Sam Ovens, because they teach this concept. If you have a large YouTube, your ads work better. Your YouTube ads specifically work better. Because it's like you're, and you have so much retargeting potential too. It's you like retarget you, your own viewers, yeah. If you have 100,000 subscribers, you've probably had like 500,000 unique viewers at least. You know what I mean? And it's this 500,000 people you can retarget and you're retargeting people who resulted in an organic search. So, so if all your videos are about business and your exact vertical, all of the people who viewed your stuff and subscribed to you are in that vertical. So it's, it's just so much. And that's, that's the point. It's, it's, it's so much retargeting potential. It's like, I don't even, I don't even really like doing cold traffic ads. I really don't. Whereas like, if I'm going to do cold traffic ads, it's to get people to like watch the content first. And then I'll send you retargeting ads for the actual offer. 
Yeah. Um, so you also mentioned YouTube SEO. What I've seen is a video will rank depending upon the audience retention graph that you're able to get. So the, the, the higher the audience retention, the easier it ranks directly in relation to the audience retention graphs of your competing videos. So like if, uh, if you're in B2B and the industry is like excessively antiquated and then you have like 45 year old Bob, for example, talking about in a suit and a whiteboard, uh, talking about how to generate uh, clients from cold email, you know, in a very uh, uh, corporate acceptable like tone uh, with some corporate background music in the background, like the audience retention graph of that is just gonna be absolutely garbage. But mm -hmm. then if you've got like Daniel, you know, like uh, kick ass hair, like et cetera, 25 years old, he's like, this is how you fucking do it etc click here etc if you want to learn more and you're, you're spitting facts it's uh it's it's very different i guess it like honestly depends on the industry but like b2b is uh is pretty ripe uh to take advantage of uh considering how antiquated things were before yeah and it's like there's there's searches for b2b and uh, i think it's something to note though if you're making videos in like the b2b space you're not going to get millions of views but it doesn't matter doesn't matter because they're cor they're the correct people watching it and they spend a lot of money you're not trying to get millions of views you're trying to get millions of dollars other than business uh i was i remember i was on your twitter once and you posted like a tiktok style video so you tried like uh you tried the shorts basically like subbed overlay b-roll etc background music you made one point that I agreed with 100%, and it's something that I'm doing more and more right now, like, as I try to essentially, like, further optimize myself. Because, like, for me, like, most of my time in business is just self-optimization at the end of the day. Like, I've changed so much since I discovered what online business is versus right now, and there's still a couple of changes that need to be done. The, uh, the one thing that you mentioned that really stood out to me is, it might not be your exact words, but you need to be bored. Do you remember that video? Yeah. Yeah. That like, I fucking agree like 250% with regards to that. Like the amount of overstimulation that people have right now. And the fact that like boredom is like absolutely eradicated, but that's like the fucking time where you get those kick-ass ideas. It's the time where you can essentially see everything. It's like a plague, right? And so many people are like totally unaware of this. So the, uh, uh, like it, it's something I do myself. Like I just unplug fully for like 24 hours, give or take. And you see your brain change. Like you start thinking slower. That, that's number one. Like it, it's uh, that you, you mentioned that uh, yeah. you give, you give your, your brain time to process. Like you, you, you have an issue and like, it's just, it's, it's processing in the background. But if you, if you're like focused on, your phone, you're watching TikTok for is, you, there's no processing power. Bro, it's, like drugs. it's like drugs, man. Right. Yeah, like TikTok is like drugs. Like yeah. all short form content is just like dopamine, 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 dopamine. And it just yeah. rewires your brain. Have what's you read it? uh have you read what's it called? Uh Shallow. Uh it's by uh it's a book by a guy called I think Craig Newport. Mm -hmm. Um hold up, what is it? Let me uh load it up right now. Craig Shallow. I highly recommend this book to just about everyone. And uh, I keep forgetting the name of the book, but he basically did a study talking about how uh, constant, uh, constant digital, like uh, constant access to digital stuff essentially rewires your brain and just comparing brains like 20 years ago to like brains right now and just how we behave. Uh, Craig Newport, as far as I remember, but I, I can't remember the name of the book. Uh, I think it's called Shallow. And it basically compares deep thinking to shallow thinking and how every time you distract yourself, it takes your brain an additional 15 minutes to go back into deep thought. Yeah. And the, the studies that he did are very, very interesting. And yeah, dude, I kind of, I kind of want to just go like rent a, a, a log cabin and like sit in the sun and not have my uh, phone at all. I don't know if it's digital minimalism by Cal Newport. It is by Cal Newport, but I think it's, I think it's called shallow. I'm not sure. I need to do a couple of Google searches, but uh, whatever the book is, I highly recommend it. And as per log, yeah, I highly recommend it as well. Let's cover a couple of questions from the chat because I've started them. And uh, I think we'll wrap it up as we near the hour itself. Cool. So how do you hit inbox? Which software do you use? So for your cold emails right now, which software are you currently using? Is it so what do you want to do? What you want to do is buy your domains on Google domains, which is going to automatically give you what's called SPF and DKIM records. That's what 
do it through Google domains and get Google Workspace. That's you get that. And then what you want to do is add a DMARC record, D M A R C. And then just look up online what how to add a DMARC record. And then from there, um, you just warm up domains. You can use something like ours, like melody.io. There's a warm up tool, let's put it on warm up for like two weeks. After you're warming up for two weeks, start sending emails. 100%. Do you use Zoho or are you still on the G Suites? No, nah, just Google Workspace. Right. Don't you get pissed off when they ban your account? I mean, like you just don't send a shit on emails. You'll be fine. Mm. Just keep them at like, like max it at 50 a day after a couple of weeks. I'd rather, I'd rather send less emails and not get the accounts banned. Right. Yeah, I agree with you. The the thing that I preach right now, basically, to everybody in the community is essentially Zoho because the uh, deliverability studies that uh, our analysts did, uh, basically me with Glock Ops, the uh, deliverability tests that we did uh, basically showed that Gmail and Zoho have the exact same deliverability, but Zoho is essentially cheaper. Plus, they don't ban you as soon as you start sending 100 emails per day. Even though now, as of recent, from the Growth Hacking Bootcamp, we're getting a couple of reports that a couple of Zoho accounts are being banned, which I need to investigate a bit further. But they're a lot more lenient as opposed to Google, so they don't they they don't ban you. Um, but yeah, I'm sure you're aware that it 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 just happens by more domains. You know have I mean? you tried Outlook? It's like garbage. <laughs> No, nah, but Nick, Ab you know Nick Abraham? I think so, yeah. He loves Outlook. He preaches heavy Outlook. Yeah, but like the deliverability, like from the reports that I've seen is like, it's, you, you really need to warm it up for ages. Yeah. Uh, he likes that. Right. Like um, George, uh, you use any GSA or other products that are worth it? I think this question is referring to your story with regards to uh, Amazon and eBay. What is, what is what GSA? I have no idea. I, I've, I've, I've seen this abbreviation before, but I have no idea. George, if you're still on, tell us what GSA is. Hold on, let me look up GSA. Uh, I, don't, yeah, I don't know what that means. J Money says you have to grind different show, more fluff with your videos, like show you with girls and cars, and people will come when it's just straight content. Most people don't like to see that. Bro, what? Have you considered? So I don't. I haven't understood J Money. Yeah, but it, it, J Money, you, you, you got to understand the context of like who's watching my video. I'm not trying to sell like a biz op course. I'm trying to. I'm trying to get people who buy B two B services to buy my stuff. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, I mean, I could do that, and I could flex a little bit. But it's like if I do it too hard, it's gonna it's gonna kind of like turn those people off a little bit. You know what I mean? Like I'm selling to like older people. But if you like at, at some point, if you do want to go mass market, like if you want to break the, uh, the uh, like five figure sub count, you do need to, you do need to go this path. Yeah. But, I, like, I, you know, I, I'm going the Hermosi path. That's, that's what I'm doing. Right. With, with a little bit of like playing around, you know what I mean? It's a little different. I'm going the Daniel Fazio path. I'm making it. Um, then George, you prefer emailing or using contact forms? I think you prefer emailing. Yeah. Um, yeah. this guy, I think, is George again getting GMB profile B2B data one mil a day from extra dot. But what can I do with it? Is the Q tips welcome? If GMB profile data contains cold emails, you could basically offer them a uh, Google review service, uh, for Google My Business. So that's one thing that you can offer. Um, if not, you'd essentially, if it doesn't offer them in the GMB, you have to cross-reference the data with Google Maps to basically scrape their contact details using text hour, fuck knows what. Um, Lucas, will there be a Black Friday deal for your cold email course? You've got to know. You're talking to me? Do, do yeah. you have a cold email course as well? No, I've, I've, I've got like a course of everything, which is a pain and a, it's, it's a pain and a good thing. But uh, yeah, I, I think. Yeah, specifically I, 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 yeah, sure. I'll do one. I, yeah. I yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> All right. Okay. See you next week. Sumit, uh, talking about YouTube recently, Facebook is also giving a lot of organic reach. Yeah, reels and IG reels. Are you doing any reels or no? No, because I'm banned. Like, I wish I could, but <laughs> I, 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 you gotta understand. I am banned from every meta product. I'm banned from Messenger, WhatsApp, Facebook, all the ads, everything, probably Oculus. Like, I cannot use their stuff, right? Like, I Bro, how bad how bad was the leak that you're selling? Because like the 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 other guy that it I was talking to, it wasn't even bad. They're just being dickheads. Like they just are. And then they're like, all right, well, 
well, we, well, we want you, we want you want, we want you to give us the code and then we'll, we'll, we'll think about letting you back on. I'm like, no, let me back on. Then I'll give you the code. Did they want the client list as well? Yeah. Yeah. The, so the Nate, Nate, let me, I'm not giving them the client list. Exactly. Nate Aston, um, who's now in the OnlyFans business. Uh, he manages model models. He's not a model himself. Uh, he, uh, he was based in the UK. And they wanted to extradite him. They're, you, you can say anything you want in a cease and desist. You can They're not going to. It's not illegal. It's against the terms of service. You can ban me. Congrats. Right. But I think if you start like a low key profile, you won't have a problem. Yeah, probably not. But it's. I don't know. They just laid off 11,000 people. Maybe the person who was in charge of that is gone now. Now's the time. There's no better time than now. Um, right. Then you can buy an account from someone, a VPN, and you computer, and you'll be fine. Yeah, but if he puts his name up, uh, they'll just cross. Yeah, it's, it's, it's also the name. I'd have to put a different name, which is just like, and that destroys the function of like from YouTube to Instagram. Funny, you know what I mean? Is pain in the ass. Exactly. Uh, what are your What are your future plans right now? Just grind on your personal brand, and that's it. Like that's your. Uh, like what's your end of year goal? Which is yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna ramp up some some like heavy outbound. Like we're gonna we're gonna get some cold callers for client ascension. Um, we're gonna do some more cold email, obviously, just testing angles and whatnot. I spent a really long time just trying to find a good because like the way we are framing it before is like we'll show you how to scale your marketing agency to thirty k a month. But there's so many problems with that. It's like one, we don't work with just marketing agencies. Two, we're not. We can get you way farther than the thirty k a month. So I, we have to change it up. Like to just find an angle where it's like, if you're a B two B business, marketing agency consultant or freelancer, you want to turn clients. You, you want to turn one hundred percent cold prospects into clients with cold email. Go to client session. So we found that, and now we just it's more so about the execution of that and like. Trying to structure how it's delivered to large organizations and like kind of how to pitch this. Like, do you do they want to put their SDRs in here? Do they just want us to go like place cold emailers or cold callers in their business and kind of like do it at like a recruitment fashion? Like, I'm trying to find the path to like 25k deals and like 30k deals, you know what I mean? Like, real, real stuff. Because it's like we know how to like sell. This is a B two B business, and they're trying to sell like ten k a month, twenty k a month, or if it's like yearly con, they're trying to sell like hundred k a year. We know how to sell that, like this on behalf of other. Like I know what to say in a cold email. I know how to get the leads to do it. Like I know how to get the email delivered. Right? And it's, it's not even just cold email. It's cold calling too. It's it's like functional sales. You know what I mean? Like it actually operating a sales organization. Like we just how have you been? How 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 have you managed to bring? Uh, how many clients you say you have? One hundred and fifty. How do you manage to bring all the existing students so far? Purely personal brand or outbound? Some of it's outbound. It's probably like twenty percent outbound. 20% then, outbound. Yeah, okay. the rest right. of it is personal brand. Yeah. Right. So the uh, like what outbound tactics have worked for you so far? Cold email and cold DMing. Who did you or like? What was the target market and the offer for the uh, DMs on the cold email? So target, tar, target market was it was scraped from people on Twitter, right? Okay, so, so it, you were it, it was accounts similar to ours, and it's like, uh -huh. hey, are you like if they're running a B two B business? It's like, hey, do you want to get clients with cold email, right? And then we have a setter, so he gets on calls with people, and then we have the closers, so it's a two call close almost always. So, so now like, you're looking. Now, right now, you're looking for a uh, scalable uh, outbound strategy for uh, client ascension, basically. Yeah, and then yeah. probably probably some YouTube ads, retargeting mostly. This is what you, this is what you guys got to understand, and like a like a point I want to really push. Why don't you do uh, like? Sorry for interrupting you, but like, why don't you do LinkedIn lead ads uh, for yourself? Because like. I know a couple of people that are like doing pretty well. I know you might think they're overpriced, but trust me, they're not. They're overpriced if your creative is garbage because you're competing with like other people whose creative is absolutely garbage. But from what I've seen and from the pilots that I'm running right now, and yeah, th this is like fucking, this is like a fucking growth hack that I'm going to give you guys. If you do TikTok ad style videos as a LinkedIn ad, your, C your CPC drops down to less than a dollar. 
I, and I can prove it right now, showcasing the background. I'm going to write that down. If you do TikTok style ads, video ads on LinkedIn, your CPC drops down to less than a dollar. Why? Because nobody else is fucking doing it right now. I tried it uh, for a online university course for an online bachelor, basically a pilot that I'm running. So like I, I typically just whatever, touch shit. It also, time. that vertical video with captions works on Twitter as well. Very well. I do Twitter. Exactly. I do and Twitter. Make, sh- make sure that it's actually TikTok style, not like you with your uh, Nokia or Panasonic just filming yourself. Like it has to be subtitled, B-rolled. There has yeah. to be like background music, etc., And it has to be relevant. And there needs to be a hook within the first three seconds. Otherwise, yeah. the whole video is just nobody's going to fucking watch it. Yeah. Uh, the, the hook is like the most important thing for the, yeah. the delivery of the ad itself. But those ads that I'm seeing right now are killing it. And I'm testing them out in a couple of other verticals. So uh, test it out. You never know. With the lead form as well. Because you can you can afford having cold callers hop on call with them. Because if you close one, essentially, it covers the ad spend plus this dude's uh, salary. So test that out. I've done a little, I've done a little organic on on LinkedIn. I've racked up like, I, I think I've posted maybe like 20 something posts. I have like 1,100 followers on it. But I, I dislike organic stuff. And the reason why is because it's just it, it, the fact that you can just like make one YouTube video and then be able to spawn like five Twitter threads and, and eight shorts and like six LinkedIn posts and then like nine individual tweets from like a single long form video on YouTube it's just the most hilarious concept to me. And it's just so funny that it actually works. So you, I love, it's, it's actually low effort. It's like just systematizing. So long form YouTube video, just everything else is spawned from that. Are you doing anything with TikTok ads? Have you played around with it or no? No, I haven't. I, I have like, I have like 18,000 followers on, on TikTok. Because I post a couple of videos. But the problem with it is that like they're just so dumb. Like they're just they just, they just say the dumbest stuff on the videos or it's like no way like, like there's no way you can make 10k a month it's like bro shut up like it's <laughs> yeah because yeah, everybody like yeah. everybody's everybody's watching your video like a, a 17 year old kid like everyone everyone, everyone. Problem. The, i don't the, want everyone to watch it though so that's why I like youtube shorts because it delivers to the correct people TikTok, it just spawns it off into the ether and like, just a bunch of idiots watch it. What the fuck did I just read? <laughs> read this pinned comment. <laughs> I mean, I mean, J Money, was, uh, yeah, paid is cool. Like, I, I buy ads. I just also like organic. What, what, uh, I had, uh, like, there's a saying only losers pay for sex and marketing. <laughs> so. Um, are you doing anything with TikTok ads or no? Did I ask that? I think I asked that. Mm-mm. Yeah, I did. I just asked that. Fuck. Um, you should definitely check it out because it's uh, it's yeah, I heard highly they rip saturated. It. I heard they ripped um, it, especially for B 2 C stuff. Exactly. Or e-com. the the uh, uh, tactic that I want to start doing right now, just to check it out, is essentially just order a shit ton of products from Alibaba and see if I can make products spin off content, uh, like with content marketing without the paid ads themselves. Because you have like all these cool products that like generate content on their own. And um, like a lightsaber or like the the like semi-automatic like water guns that like yeah, shoot. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking yeah. About. those products sell organic. Like you don't even need to put ad spend behind it. Just link in bio because oh. like people like reshare it, etc. They comment and it spins off on its own. Um, but the uh, the competition is pretty high. Sweet, bro. All right. Um, I think it was a good one. Uh, yeah, nonetheless. sure. Right. Thank you. Thank you for having me on, brother. I appreciate it. So you're not on WhatsApp? No. No? I'm going to hit you up on Twitter right after. All right, cool. Sounds good. Cheers, bro. Talk soon. Bye. All right, peace.